All right, folks, here we are. So we're jumping a few chapters, going to go to chapter 12 on what are called continuous latent variable models. And if you're reading the deep learning book, this is chapter 16, and it's basically exactly the same material. Um, if you haven't seen latent variable models, you'll, you'll, get a, you'll get a sense of what they are as the chapter goes on. But the basic idea is that we're in a, we're in a uh, unsupervised learning setting, so we're just trying to describe our data distribution. And we're going to do so in terms of latent variables. Latent is just another word for hidden. So the idea is you observe some set of variables, and you're going to assume that those variables are actually generated by a, second, a set of variables you don't observe, the latent variables. Um, and and you're, you're going to try to maybe infer what those latent variables are and the parameters of um, how you go from the latents to, to the observed. And the reason you might want to do this, um, again, you'll, it'll become clear as we go, but it, it's often going to be things like you want to put um, some of the statistical dependencies, some of the statistical structure into those latent variables, um, and then maybe make the mapping to the observables a bit simpler. Um, the data itself might actually be coming from, like you might know that actually there are latent variables that you're really, really interested in um, that are generating your observations, et cetera. So there's lots, lots of reasons for, um, for doing that, and we'll see some of those as we go. So I'm just going to kind of go, um, go quickly through the sections in the chapter to give you a preview of what's going to be coming up. Okay, so he's going to give start off with a kind of really you know, kind of a good example of you know uh, why we need these uh, latent variables, and we're going to start off first with PCA. So PCA is maybe the most famous latent variable model, but the first it wasn't derived kind of from that perspective exactly. So we're going to actually the first couple of sections are just going to be looking at PCA kind of the way it was originally uh, developed, I guess in the in the 30s and even uh, of, the, of the last century and even earlier. So the first couple of sections will be maybe actually more like um, PCA the way you've seen it before. Um, so that'll be that. The second formulation, not equivalent formulation, but a kind of related formulation. Again, without really thinking about latent variables. And they're kind of in the sense more of data compression or data, um, um, yeah, kind of reduction to some extent. So finding kind of a, a low dimensional projection of your data that kind of captures it in this, you know, at least square sense. Okay, I'm going to continue. Then there'll be a little bit on the applications of PCA. So how you would actually, you know, what it actually looks like. There'll be some fun examples um, showing PCA in practice, which will be good. Um, as we'll continue. And actually this section in the, in the deep learning book, he kind of sections it out a little bit more. So like some of these things we're talking about, like whitening, the material I believe is the same, the equations seem very similar, but he just kind of sections it out a bit, which is, which is useful. Okay, and then we'll do, there'll be a little bit on high dimensional data, you know, just it's kind of like what to do, basically a, a kind of a, um, yeah, just way that you can kind of essentially work with the transpose of your data when it's convenient. Um, to essentially do PCA in an efficient, computationally efficient way. So that's kind of useful to know about. And then we're going to then um, step into talking about the latent variable models um, in earnest. So we're going to now, instead of kind of having come up with these heuristic, kind of useful uh, approaches to PCA, we're going to now, um, again, kind of rederive or look at PCA from a different perspective, from this approach of um, these latent variables and you know, the probability distributions that relate the latent variables to the, to the observations. And we'll see that that has a number of advantages, which, which is going to list. Um, and so we see kind of the, the model for, for PCA. So you know that your data, your, your latents, these are often called Z, are going to be coming from a very simple distribution. Um, and they're going to be, because they're normally distributed, so they're going to be uncorrelated and independent for, for, for a normal distribution. And then there's just going to be some model that relates your latent variables to your observable. So in this case, for the case of PCA, it's going to be some linear model with some offset, and we're going to assume isotropic noise. And so the game is going to be, you know, figuring out various things in this model, for example, the latent variables, the parameters, etc. And the cool thing about doing this is that it will allow us to then expand, you know, make these models more complicated to kind of capture um, different types of dependencies, nonlinear dependencies as we go. So it's kind of a very nice framework um, for understanding um, you know, how to describe data and kind of unsupervised learning. Um, because one issue can be that you can, you know, you'll, people will come up with kind of a cool ideas, um, 
but it can, after a while, it can seem like you just have a bunch of, you know, isolated ideas here that work in, in different settings. And so this, this, this notion of framing them in terms of latent variable models allows you to kind of just essentially unify a lot of them or combine them and just think about them in the same way. So it's actually just good for your own learning and for your own kind of machinery, mental machinery of how to think about all of these um, in kind of with one framework. So this is kind of the big, the big deal, the kind of an example of a latent variable model. Okay, and you know here here we see it. So here is kind of, for example, you have some correlated data. This is like kind of your observed distribution of data. And the idea is, well, actually, these correlations that we're seeing, these statistical dependencies, are actually due to a one-dimensional latent variable, which has maybe kind of concentrated around its its mean, um, but then, which then generates your observations by kind of taking each point along this kind of this latent direction and then adding some isotropic noise to it. So you're actually kind of breaking up the problem. Um, into kind of maybe the source, the source of these correlations being due to this kind of um, this diagonal latent variable um, and then generating uncorrelated um, observations. So that's kind of you know, one of the ways of looking at it. Okay, um, so we're going to keep going. And you know, now we, you know, we've got this probabilistic approach, so we can do maximum likelihood, try to figure out what these parameters are, things like this. So just kind of doing that old machinery, that's what we'll do. Keep going. So again, so we've got expectation maximization. So we haven't covered this together, so I'll put a little mini tutorial on that. But um, it's going to be how to, again, determine the parameters in latent variable models. And you'll have two steps. There'll be kind of an E step where you figure out, um, you figure out the, the latent variables, and an M step where you update your estimates of, of the parameters. Uh, and you just kind of go back and forth until it, um, it converges. And so this is, this is quite cool. You might not need to do it for PCA, but he actually points out that even for PCA, where we can actually find these things in closed form, in high dimensions, that can be really, um, when you have lots of data, in high dimensions, it can be actually computation expensive because effectively you'll be just, you'll be coming up with all the, um, um, the you'll be kind of, coming up with all the parameters all at once, and maybe you don't, maybe you can actually do it more iteratively, uh, and that's more useful and more computationally efficient. So I uh, will talk about EM for PCA. Uh, let's keep going. And then the Bayesian approach. So again, this will be coming, the idea again will be, you know, you want to know, uh, let's say a predicted distribution. So you want to let's say, integrate over um, the parameters or the latents and things like that. So we'll see how to do that for, um, for the PCA model. Yeah, there we go. So we're, you know, this is a predictive distribution, the maybe marginal likelihood, and we're just going to integrate over uh, this W parameter, this, um, the mapping from the latents to, um, to the observations. Great. Okay, so going on, yeah, so now we get to factor analysis. And now factor analysis is cool because the model, the underlying model is very similar to PCA, but has kind of a very uh, interesting difference. So you'll see that the latent variables that are going from so again you know you have latent variables going to um, you know having some linear observation going linearly to produce the observations there's going to be some um, mean um, plus some some mean but now you're going to have instead of having isotropic noise on the um, um, on the outputs you're going to assume that actually the um, each of the output dimensions have their own amount of variance which essentially generalizes your model. So you're going to have kind of the shared, the shared variability is going to be being now contributed by W and the kind of the, the, the private um, noise, the private variability is going to be captured by this variable psi. And it turns out that, uh, you know, this kind of natural addition, we can't actually solve it in closed form, I believe, but we can with PCA. So sorry, with, uh, with expectation maximization. So I think that's why you actually put, um, put the model here after we've kind of talked about EM. Very good. So let's keep going. Okay, so that's kind of the, the end of, um, let's say, the, the, the linear models. And now we start getting into kind of the nonlinear model. The first one is actually this very cool idea of kernel PCA. So again, it's in, um, if you know about kind of kernel methods, um, and it won't be necessary that you do, but um, for this for this section, but the idea is that, you know, some of these, a lot of these algorithms that we have, for example, the ones for PCA, you can actually generalize them um, using something called a kernel trick. And what that will allow us to do is essentially do um, start using some of the flexibility of nonlinear of nonlinearity basically, but while having all the benefits of linearity. So kernel PCA is effectively is equivalent to um, taking your data, projecting it into some high into potentially high higher dimensional space, nonlinearly if if you want, 
um, and then doing PCA on that space. So it allows you to kind of leverage some of that, um, leverage kind of nonlinearity, higher dimensionality, um, and capture kind of a, hopefully allow you to capture wider set of data. So that's what kernel PCA is gonna be about. Um, you won't need to know, like it'll be helpful if you know about um, uh, kernel methods, but um, it's uh, self-contained. So um, it'll be, you know, you'll, you'll understand it um, as we go. Great, and I think there's a nice example, you know, of what uh, I think what the principal components look like, and you can see they've got all these, uh, you know, much more curved shapes. So they're not going to be, you know, um, they're no longer um, single kind of single single directions, but they're going to have some curved um, curve some curvature to them, and that'll show up in the contours um, of those of those um, um, eigenvectors and um, eigendirections in the original space. Okay, so but the point is that basically with this kernel PCA, you'll be able to capture kind of nonlinear relationships, nonlinear types of data where um, which which you wouldn't be able to with ordinary PCA. So it's expanding the range of what you can do. Very good. And then we'll come to the last section of the chapter is going to be talk, talking about kind of nonlinear latent variable models, and that's going to be um, either if we you know, when we relax this Gaussian assumption we have on the latent. So the very first example of that is going to be. Um, um, with, with ICA, where you are going to assume that the output, you know, the mapping from the, the latent variables to the output is still going to be linear, but you're going to assume that the, the inputs are going to be, um, um, that the, the latent variables are going, to be, are going to be assumed to be independent, and uh, that's going to have some, and you have to make sure they're non-Gaussian, and uh, that's going to allow you to kind of solve some very interesting problems. For example, it's like a blind source separation problem. But because of this, because of the statistical assumptions you make on the latents, then you can no longer kind of close, you know, solve it in this enclosed form. So you have to come up with algorithms for doing that. Okay, and then we're going to talk about another example, which is going to be these auto-associative neural networks, which we, which we, um, which we now call autoencoders. They've been called autoencoders for for a long time, of course. Um, and so that's going to be where you're going to you're going to have potentially kind of a you can think of PCA as doing a linear mapping from inputs to latent variables and then back out. Well, now we're going to allow these mappings to be nonlinear. And he talks about this kind of a little bit here, but actually, yeah. So you see, you see these kind of this nonlinear mapping happening. Um, so then you can see, you know, these, such a network effectively performs a nonlinear principal components analysis. So this is this is quite cool. We'll talk about it, but actually, it turns out that. Um, um, There'll be a whole. He talks about it in, in some more depth in the deep learning book because it's, this this field is advanced quite a bit. So I think if we go to deep learning, there'll be a whole chapter on autoencoders. So I think the natural we might do a chapter um, on this chapter on autoencoders after we've done the um, this chapter on um, PCA and all of that because it just kind of essentially expands out that that part on autoencoders really nicely. Cool. Um, yeah, and then just talking about um, this is all you can think of this this whole you can kind of think of um, most of what we did in this chapter, particularly kind of the setting where the, we had lower dimensional dimen lower dimensional latents and the observations as essentially trying to find the manifold, often a nonlinear manifold, which generated our data. So the latent variables will be kind of coordinates or positions on that manifold, and then the, the observations will be kind of noisy versions. Um, or you know, noisy projections of, of that manifold, and so here we just kind of summarize some of the um, you know some of the methods that were coming had been developed up to that point. For example, um, you know, the principal curves. I think uh, is there there is yeah multi-dimensional scaling, which is an important one. Locally linear embedding, which was um, uh, was a big one at the time, and I think still is. You know you can you can definitely worth having a look. You know isomap. Which are all kind of these are quite related, and it turns out these you can actually view both within the um, kernel PCA approach um, for different kernels. So it's, the kernel PCA approach is also cool because it allows you to unify uh, lots of these. Cool, um, and I think that's basically it. So so that is the end of the chapter. So basically, um, the chapter is all about these um, latent variable models, but starting kind of with the simplest one, PCA. Um, looking at it from its original formulation, which wasn't about latent variables, you know, explicitly, and then defining latent variables, latent variable models, what they mean, looking at PCA from that perspective, and then expanding the scope, and then eventually arriving in kind of a the, the nonlinear setting and hitting on things like um, autoencoders um, and manifold learning.
So I think it's, it's kind of a very cool chapter, very, you know, very useful stuff. Lots of it is still happening now. Most of you will have done PCA, will still be doing PCA, so it'll kind of give you a deeper understanding of that. Um, you've probably heard about variational autoencoders. That's another, you know, this is kind of the, maybe some of the frontiers of, uh, of these, you know, latent variable models. So you'll, so I think this will give you really good preparation for that um, and for kind of studying those topics, but also a deeper understanding of these basic, but very, you know, robust and powerful techniques, um, you know, like PCA, and factor analysis that we're, we're using all the time and I expect we'll be using for um, a long time to come. So hopefully um, you're excited to cover this chapter like I am and I will see you in the next video where we uh, will do the very first section um, putting, you know, of the introduction. All right, so hope to see you then. Bye.